Hey what's up guys, back again with another video. So today we are going to review the Acer Predator 32 inch XB321HK 4K gaming monitor. Now you guys may remember I used to run a ultra wide 3 monitor setup in my main PC and I did this for over a year showing games running at the 5760x1080 screen modes. Well I decided to sell two of the monitors and I kept the third one for my other PC which you remember is the dual Xeon rendering machine. Now back to the monitor itself, it features a 32 inch IPS panel, 4 millisecond response time, NVIDIA G-Sync for which people that don't know is an adaptive sync technology which eliminates the problem of screen tearing, stuttering and input lag. This is the first time I've experienced NVIDIA G-Sync and it's absolutely amazing. First impressions on going from my previous 23 inch displays to this monitor is wow, this thing is huge. The first thing to note is how big the box is. This is a 32 inch display and the box is huge. Inside the box contains the monitor itself, the monitor stand, one HDMI cable, one display port cable, a USB 3 cable and a power cable as well as the standard instruction manual and warranty card. On the back of the monitor is pretty straightforward. It features a power connector, a single display port, a single HDMI port, as well as a USB 3 pass-through and two USB 3 connectors. And to complete the package, it comes with a thin bezel, a very cool Predator logo on the bottom of the display and a nice red stand that's very, very stable to really make this monitor pop on your desk. Now the monitor is adjustable and has height adjustment and can tilt minus 5 degrees to 25 degrees and there are built in speakers, two of them, which are 2 watts apiece, but I will likely never use them of course in favour of just a decent speaker system on the computer itself. Now onto the next thing for the monitor adjustment settings, there are 5 buttons on the base of the monitor on the right hand side that are standard. I was kind of hoping they would be a little easier to access but it does the job. Now going through the menus we can see the different picture setting adjustments uh, as well as color adjustments with the standard settings including the option to increase or decrease the saturation in the hardware of the monitor without needing to use something like Nvidia Digital Vibrance. There are also various display settings for the screen including the ability for a built-in FPS display as well as a aim point for those people that like to play FPS shooters. Now I choose to disable all these options myself and the various other settings including the ability to dim the power LED and enable or disable the USB hub on the monitor. Overall this is a pretty standard list of features that you would expect to see in a typical gaming monitor. Now for the next thing I want to talk about was the IPS glow on the monitor. At 100% brightness, as you can see on the top right edge, there is some glow, but I will say that the camera really makes it look a lot worse than what it is. Looking at it myself, I can barely notice the glow, and during gaming and regular use of this monitor, I can't notice it at all. Okay, so all this techno babble aside, how well does this monitor actually perform? In gaming, it's amazing. 4K looks phenomenal. I don't think this video will actually capture how good it looks. I recommend you take a look at a 4K gaming PC setup sometime and draw your own conclusions. Now some games are still quite taxing at 4K, so I had to drop the resolution to 1440p and even though that, that this is not the monitor's native display, it still looks great at this resolution, which is just another plus for this monitor and when you do decide to upgrade your hardware to handle 4K, this monitor will be ready for you. The other big thing for me recommending this monitor is productivity. You effectively have four 1080p displays in a 2x2 formation, which means a ton of real estate. This makes things like video editing or music production, as well as regular web browsing or just navigating around Windows an absolute breeze. I love the ability to utilize Adobe Premiere Pro for instance in a 4K display because you have so much real estate to work with. Alright guys, so what did you think of the Acer Predator XB321HK 4K G-Sync monitor? I'm very happy with my purchase. As I mentioned previously, I picked it up as a uh, upgrade to the three uh, 23 inch surround displays that I had previously. And there was one other thing I wanted to address with this particular video. That's the 4K 28 inch Acer Predator monitor. That's the little brother to the 32 inch monitor and whether you should consider picking one of those up. Now for me, uh, I would think that that's a pretty good pickup as well, but 
For me, I think 28 inches on a 4K display is a little bit too small. In other words, the desktop icons on Windows may end up being quite small, and then you may have to resort to window scaling to increase the size of the pixels. And that can also introduce some side effects as far as running Windows goes, because some of the applications you use will not scale uh, accordingly. So. I think 28 inches personally is too small for a 4K display. When I did upgrade to the 4K display, I had a choice between an ultra wide or a 4K display. And in my opinion, I felt that the 4K display was the right choice for me. But we'll see what the future holds. Obviously at Comdex and late last year, there was a flurry of ultra wide displays with G-Sync that were released onto the market. So they are quite popular. But as mentioned, I've had a taste of surround and, and three monitor surround support, and um, I'm ready to move to the next phase of computer gaming. And for me, in my opinion, I believe that it's 4Ks. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. As always, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions about the monitor or anything else in this video, please leave a comment below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.